What's up everyone and welcome to Roby Tech where I, Justin Roby, AKA Roby One Kenobi, look at that, talk tech with you wonderful people. We're gonna get you up to speed on everything going on in the PC hardware and gaming world that we can fit into 10 minutes of a little bit of time. Now we've got some awesome news from NZXT, I'm excited about this, interesting info about the RTX 2060 KO series GPUs and a few leaks about Intel's Z490 boards. Does anybody care anymore? And a plethora of gaming news. Get ready, ladies and gentlemen, because this is Roby Tech. We've got a few juicy tidbits of news about Intel's upcoming Z490 boards. According to one of Intel's AIBs, the plan is that the Z490 boards officially get announced sometime in May. It's gonna be May. The new Z490 boards will be the home for Intel's new 14 nanometer based Comet Lake S lineup that will launch around the same time as the boards, as most boards do. I mean, you gotta have a board to put your new CPU in, am I right? I think so. But... Intel is also expected to launch their new 10 nanometer CPUs later this year, and so far supply for this chip is going to be problematic for the board partners. Here's what we know about the new LGA 1200 socket. Write it down, ladies and gentlemen, you gotta get used to that. We're out of the 1100s. We've got a higher pin count package, no backwards compatibility with legacy chips. Now, before you panic, this is no surprise, right? We saw the same thing as we went from Threadripper 2nd gen to Threadripper 3rd gen. No change to the ILM dimensions or thermal solution retention Attention, improved power delivery and support for future IO features. The first pin orientation is going to remain the same, but the socket will shift a little bit in terms of its location. And no, there will not be PCIe Gen 4 support. Come on, Intel, we gotta get going on this. Now, there was also a leak that really isn't much of a leak, but just a bit of a confirmation that Z490 is in fact what it's going to be called. EEC, who is notable for information on future board partner products, leaked the names of MSI Z490 boards. Spoiler alert, they're the exact same names as their motherboards, but with Z490 in the name instead of Z390 or X570 or TR40. We've got a Pro, the Creator, the Tomahawk, the Gaming Edge, the Gaming Pro Carbon, the MEG series, all the way up to Godlike for their EATX boards. Now, while it's not exactly something to write home about, the fact that these names are starting to come out from board partners could lend itself to an announcement date sometime soon, like May, for example, which is what we said earlier. Now. There was also a test that surfaced about the new i5 10300H scores in Cinebench R20. It got a 1924. Now that is 11% better than the 9300H, but if you're using a laptop to render 3D scenes, you probably aren't going to go for something in the mid-range in terms of price point, especially when the new Ryzen CPUs are coming to the mobile market and are pretty much outperforming every single mid-tier Intel CPU. So yeah, interesting, but not entirely relevant at this point. We recently had AMD's earning call for Q4 2019 and Dr. Lisa Su confirmed that the Navi GPU will get a refresh and that their next gen architecture would launch sometime this year. Now, there were a lot of ways that the internet interpreted refresh. Does this mean we're getting new cards? Are we gonna see super versions of the 5000 series cards? Well, it does look like we were talking about the iterative transition similar to what we saw between Zen and Zen Plus in their CPUs, but this time for their Navi GPUs. What this could mean is that later this year, we could see an RX 5750 model that uses a slightly different version of RDNA. So far, their new roadmap for GPUs doesn't show an RDNA Plus, but rather RDNA 2. So who knows? We could get a jump to the next gen graphics card from AMD rather than a tiny bump in improvements. Now with their smashing success with Ryzen 3 and Threadripper 3, AMD now has an extensive toolkit to take a serious look at their GPU game and make huge strides and improvements there. Now, as a side note, during the earnings call, AMD freaking cleaned house in Q4 with masses of massive, and I do mean massive, not masses, massive improvements year over year, like a lot better than 2018. It's kind of unreal how much they've turned around the PC enthusiast community in such a short amount of time. It's been a while since we had a new GPU from Nvidia, so the waters need to get a little muddy. EVGA shipped the RTX 2060 KO, 
with the Turing TU-104 GPU rather than the TU-106 in the standard RTX 2060. Now fans of this show will recognize this card because it was the one we put in our Ghost Canyon Nook 9. You can go ahead and click the link above me in the description to see that build because frankly that whole video is dope. And you did a great Josh, you did a great Josh. You did a great job, my friend. Now the difference is small, but in some applications, it can make a difference. The GPU and the KO are essentially the RTX 2070 or 2080 dies that weren't quite up to snuff for the 2070 or 2080 name. So they decided to throw them into 2060s and call it a day. In a few scenarios like Blender, renders that use this GPU, Gamers Nexus saw better render times when compared to the 2060 Founders Edition, but not quite as fast as the 2070 Super Founders Edition, but pretty ding dang close. So it's interesting to see 2060s with the same tensor and RT cores as the 2070 and the 2080, but at a $300 price point. Hear me, they are limited. So if you're looking for a budget card and dabble with 3D work in Blender, the 2060 KO is pretty good bang for your buck. If you like rendering using CUDA or Optics RT enabled rendering. Are you a fan of NZXT? Of course you are, and so are we. In fact, we got some pretty awesome NZXT stuff happening here really soon on the channel. Now, NZXT has consistently made some of the sleekest, cleanest, coolest AIOs, cases, fans, and boards in the last few years. But the Kraken AIO has been around for a hot and crispy minute, so it was a little overdue for an overhaul. And who doggy did NZXT deliver one heck of an update. The all new Kraken Z63 and Z73 gives you even more customization options with fine tuning settings, but now it also includes, wait for it, it also includes a 24 bit true color LCD screen that can play back your favorite GIFs, CAM data for CPU temps, and you can now personalize your rig with NCXT in a way you never could have imagined before. Now hopefully it's easier than the ASUS software to load GIFs in and NZXT is sending us one, so we can definitely check that out. And if you are watching this later, that video might be linked right here. With either a triple or double radiator layout, the new Kraken Zs come with their with the AERP radiator fans with their customized intakes and fluid dynamic bearings so they can spin quietly and reliably while keeping your bits frosty. Now let us know in the comments below what GIF you're going to use and load into your Kraken Z63 or Z73 or tweet us at roby one Kenobi because I want to see those awesome GIFs. And by the way, I worked really hard not to say GIF that entire time. Last week, we got a sneak peek at Apex Legends Season 4. But since that day, they pulled a fast one on us and changed things up. They told us that Forge and Big Dude was going to be our new legend. But no, 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 they released an animated short where they pulled a Mr. Peanut and killed him off. So now we aren't playing as Forge, we're playing as the person who actually offed him. The new character is called Revenant. And we've got a new trailer called Assimilation that showed us some of his murdering abilities. And the video is in CinemaScope, so you know it's serious business. He used to be the greatest hitman the mercenary syndicate ever had, but his programming failed and we get to see what he turned into, a walking nightmare of steel and vestigial flesh. Now he wants a vengeance. He doesn't mind dropping a few bodies along the way. The new season also comes with all new battle pass with new skins, Apex packs and more. We've got a new bolt action sniper rifle called Sentinel and a new series of ranked modes. Are you gonna switch mains to Revenant in season four? Let us know in the comments below. So Warcraft 3 Reforged is out in the wild now, but one of the biggest reasons for its initial success was a little game mode that someone made called Defense of the Ancients, or also known as Dota. That's right, Dota came from a modded game mode of Warcraft 3 and spawned an entire genre of games like, well, Dota 2, League of Legends, and Blizzard's own Heroes of the Storm. Now, while they originally planned to call Blizzard Dota until Valve said, nah, bruh, that's our copyright and we own that name. Now, this led Blizzard to make a change to their own terms of service when they released Warcraft 3 Reforge. According to the new toss, Blizzard now automatically, hear me, automatically has ownership and copyright control over all custom games made for Warcraft 3 Reforge. So yeah, Blizzard doesn't want to let another Dota slip through their fingers this time around because we are sure to see a lot of reimagined game modes coming out of this remastered game. But does this mean that modders might be less inclined to spend their time creating bespoke game modes, knowing that Blizzard could, and I mean at any point, take the idea and make whatever they want out of it, and you have nothing you can do to stop them or profit off of it. And if you thought, well, you know what, we could just go play the old Warcraft 3 and deal with the old graphics. Huh, not so fast, my friends. 
Blizzard basically nuked the old client and now you have to play through the new Reforged client so that all of the clans, ranked, matchmaking, custom maps, and campaigns are donezo. We could see some great user generated content come out of this and then rather than cease and desist, someone's idea might make it all the way into the game or create something completely new. This sort of reminds you of the time when someone made an FPS out of StarCraft and when they were told to stop, by Blizzard, they actually just hired them. And who knows, if you come up with a good idea, Blizzard may very well take it, but they might also be incentivized to give you a job. And as a result, you could be uh, working there and that'd be a great thing. What do you think? Let us know in the comments below. Are you gonna be the next future Blizzard employee? Well, guys, that is it for Robitech today. Let us know what you thought about the today's episode in the comments below. Are you excited to play a murder cyborg robot in season four of Apex Legends? Are you looking forward to Z490? Is anybody looking forward to Z490? Have you tracked down an RTX 2060 KO for that sweet, sweet near 2070 slash 2080 performance for a cheap price? I know we did in the Nook video. Now let us know all of that stuff in the comments below. Now while you're down there, be sure to slap that subscribe button, whip that like button, and ring that notification bell so you get a notification each and every time we post a new video. Also, head on over to Mixer.com slash Roby1Kenobi and give us a follow over there for our live show every Wednesday from 7 p.m. to 9 p.m. Pacific time. Also be sure to drop us a follow over at Twitter and Instagram at Roby1Kenobi. And check us out over on Facebook.com slash RobyTech. I know all your parents follow me now. <laughs> Thanks so much for watching. Now, go play some games. Hashtag beefy cores.